you know, when I took this on, I'm using the same process that I do with Bora, really, or any of those characters. <laughs> Going, we don't need Sasha, this is one of the best things I've seen on TV in years. So seriously, thank you for taking the time, man. I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you, your hair, your suit. Looking great, mate. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to jump into this. So uh, I have to be honest, the, the moment that this series was over, I, I really wanted to rewatch it knowing everything that, that I knew because I feel like it would be an entirely different experience. Every line, every performance would hit me differently after sort of the, the reveal, I guess. I'm sort of curious, as an actor, how concerned were you not with how your performance would play the first time, but maybe how your performance would play in retrospect on second watch after, after everything's been revealed? Well, you know, I'm, I was really concerned because, you know, when you're performing it, obviously you want to just experience it for the first time in the way that character would. But I wanted to make sure that there were clues for me as a performer as to why I go on that journey. And um, as a result, there was a lot of collaboration between me and Alfonso about the specificity of the language. You know, so there's like a little phrase in the second scene where I go, I'm always happy to be your plus one. And I think that was a really important thing for me to get in there because it meant, you know, the audience slightly subconsciously realized there's a bit of insecurity about this guy who admires and loves his wife, but is maybe a little bit jealous, even unbeknownst to him. So it is all about, you know, making sure that every scene really on the page is is believable. That the scene you have with Kevin Klein without getting into it in the elevator in the last episode to me is the scene of I think he says, oh, "Why didn't you, Mr. Ravenscroft?" That yeah. is that's the scene of the show. Um, right. I want to talk about having extra time to evolve a character. Obviously, with a movie, you only have two hours to flesh them out and get to know them. Here, you're given seven hours, seven episodes, and and this might be a, a strange comparison, but the only other moment i believe you've had that kind of time to evolve a character were comedic ones at the time that you spent on on borat and ali g and bruno i'm sort of curious is the process of evolving a character and getting to know them the same for uh, for robert as it is for for borat or, or is it apples and oranges i think it's all the same process for me i mean obviously you know disclaimer er, there are no jokes in this if you're coming to see me be funny you're going to be very disappointed but it's the same process, really, which are, you know, how does this character speak? What does he look like? What's his accent? How does he walk? How does he behave? What makes him unique? So really, you know, when I took this on, I'm using the same process that I do with Bora, really, or any of those characters. Just going into, you know, the basic understanding that every single person in the world speaks in their own unique way. You know, the, the language they use, what they say, their rhythms, their punctuation, their speed, the, you know, diction, the pitch of voice, the accent is unique. And that's just the words. So it's the same principle for every, every character I've done. That's pretty wild. Uh, you know, I was thinking about about your your cinematic career and the, the list of directors you've worked with is insane. When you look at Alfonso Cuaron and Martin Scorsese and Tim Burton and Aaron Sorkin and Tom Hooper and Adam McKay. I'm sort of curious of, of all the, the different styles of directing you've experienced as an actor. What is your favorite piece of direction or note you've ever gotten from a director? I think it's from Scorsese, which is I would come up with crazy suggestions on Hugo that were impossible. You know, I'd say, ah, you know, I've thought of this too late, but wouldn't it be good if the station inspector's leg gets caught on the side of the train and, you know, it's impossible to do. And he, my favorite bit of direction, favorite note was, let's try it. And, you know, Martin Scorsese can do that because they give him a lot of money to make his movies. And we would try everything. And so it was an amazing experience where I was able to come up with ideas. You know, when you're making a movie or a TV show, you are up against the clock 
and you're up against the uh, money where you've got a producer saying, we don't have time, let's finish the scene, let's get it done. This is good enough. And, you know, Marty or someone like Alfonso Cuaron, they really don't care. They don't care about the producer. <laughs> they don't care about the studio. They want to get it absolutely right. So that's wow. really, it's a really safe place to be as a performer. Well, it yields constant amazing performances, man. You are genuinely one of my favorite actors working today. And Thanks you can keep much. putting out work that, that shows me different things I didn't even know you could possibly do. Thank you for your time, man. The city of Chicago loves you. I love you. And I, I, I really do Chicago. appreciate it. I love you. Chicago. Oh. I love the skyscrapers. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. See you. Bye. Jay. They're pulling me out. Good Thanks. to see you, buddy. Bye-bye. Where we're going, we don't need roads.